<laughs> chapter 41. Okay. Okay, let me start again by showing you a video. Outside, we are going into the inner court, into the temple, the area of worship. I mean, the, where, where the altar and all those are. Uh, then we see the measurements getting smaller. And other things we can learn. But I also need you to observe. I'm going to ask you a question. What is it you see? What is it you did not see? <laughs> Chapter 41. Don't know if we can finish, but we will try. Verse 1, Then he brought me into the sanctuary and measured the door poles six cubits wide on one side and six cubits wide on the other side. Now, he brought him into the sanctuary. So 
we always refer to this. So, he brought him into this area. Yeah. Later, they will go inside here. <coughs> so, the measurements um, brought me to the sanctuary, and he can go in. Why is it Ezekiel can go in? He was a priest. He was from the tribe of Levi. He can go in. But just that, up in Babylon, he did not have the opportunity to practice as a priest. So God gave him the ministry of a prophet. So because he is, he was a priest, he could go in to the sanctuary. And we all can go in because we are all priests. <laughs> and measure the door poles. Six cubics wide on one side, six cubics wide on the other side. The, the width of the tabernacle. The width of the entryway was ten cubics. So, so enter the width of this entrance was ten cubics. So ten times of this. And the side walls of the entrance were five cubics. So this one is five, five. Uh, and the entrance was, the side walls of the entrance were five cubics on this side and five cubics on the other side. And he measured its length, 40 cubics, and its width, 20 cubics. You'll see later, it's inside. So you go inside, you go past that door, the gateway. So it's 20 cubics wide and 20 cubics, 40 cubics long. Also, he went inside. Who is this he? He went inside and measured the door post. The angel. Eh? Why our friend went to the sanctuary but didn't go inside further. Because only the most, the high priest can go into the most holy place. He was only a priest. So, outside, the angel went inside. Also, he went inside. He could not go into the most holy place, Ezekiel. The angel went. Also, he went inside and measured the door post, two cubics, and the entrance six cubics high, and the width of the entrance seven cubics. You notice the reduction in measurements. Five cubics, three cubics, now two cubics. Yeah, the, He went inside and measured the door post, two cubics, and the entrance six cubics high, and the width of the entrance seven cubics. Just now, the width of the entrance was how long? How wide? Ten. Ten. Then as you go inside, it is seven. 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 Then work. So what does Matthew 7, 14 say? Matthew 7, 14. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. That is what Jesus said. But the wider one, God. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. But his instruction is, enter by the narrow gate. So it is getting narrower. He measured the length, 20 cubics, and the width, 20 cubics, beyond the sanctuary. And he said to me, this is the most holy place. This is the most holy place. And that is, that is verse 3 and verse 4. And verse 5, he goes on to the chambers ready. So this is the most holy place. After this, he, verse 5, always he's going to talk about chambers. A most holy place. Uh, 
you remember, uh, let me show you this picture. Do you remember? This is Solomon's Temple. Solomon's Temple. They just cut for you to see. You see quite a few things, right? First, they got showbread, table of showbread. Got the candlestick. Got the, the veil. Uh, veil. Now they, they took away the veil. The veil that covers. Yeah. Got so many things. Uh. But, here got up. Just now the one we saw. The, the new the temple to come. Third temple. No up. So, in the most holy place in the third temple, you will find no ark. You will find no mercy seat. You will find no veil, no table of showbread, no candlestick, no nothing. Only that table. You, follow? you see the difference? You see the difference? No more... Yeah, they were still doing sacrifices and so on. But... The table of showbread uh, is that Jesus is the bread of life. But Jesus is already here. He's ruling and reigning over you now. He is your king of kings. Candlestick. Wow. Hey, uh, that one is the light of the world. He is already there. He is there in your presence. He's the light. Yeah. Then the Ark of the Covenant. Wow. Then the veil. No more veil. It's been torn. No more separation. He is in your midst. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So this is the mark difference you see between the third temple and the tabernacle and Solomon's temple. This is the third temple. Mm -hmm. That's all. So you look inside, measure, measure, then the angel said, this is the most holy place. Hey, you look around. Hey, not furnished. Hey, don't care. No more. No more. And then there was this altar of incense before the, the veil where the priests will offer incense. That is the prayer offered unto God on behalf of the people. No, no need. Because Jesus will be ruling and reigning. He is your king. He is there. So no need all this. But you still need to burn the sacrifice, offer the sacrifice, so you remember what suffering he went through. Verse 5. And that this holy place will be the most holy place on earth at that point in time during the millennium. There is nothing else. The whole, all nations will come up to Jerusalem and worship God. Verse 5. Next, he measured the wall of the temple. Six cubits. So the wall of the temple. This is the temple. He measured the wall of the temple. Next, he measured the wall of the temple. Six cubits. The width of each side chambers all around the temple was four cubits on every side. The side chambers were in three stories. One story, two story, three story. What were all these chambers for? These are for the priests who minister in the temple. They got a place to stay. God provides for them. Next, okay. Um, the verse 6, the side chambers were in three stories, one above the other. Thirty chambers in each story. So you count what? Thirty, no? So HDB concept is not new. Started many years ago. Yeah, not by Lim Kim San. They started God's idea. Thirty, thirty chambers. Three stories. They what? 30 story, any story. They rested on ledges which were for the side chambers 
all around each. So these chambers all rested on the ledges. which were for the side chamber all around, that they might be supported but not fastened to the wall of the temple. So they were resting but not secured to the wall of the temple. So you, I mean, I, there's no clear explanation here, but I can only surmise or just guess uh, that the temple is holy. So where you rest, yeah, you are, you are near you are resting on the ledge, but you are not secure. No, it's a holy temple. There's a holy thing. You don't go, and, you know, uh -oh, fasten onto the wall of the temple. But anyway, now then you read the next thing, verse seven. As one went up from story to story, the side chambers become became wider all round. Wow, Ezekiel can see all this. <laughs> so. Here you can't see much, but here you see, as you go up, as you go up, the side chambers become wider. It juts out, it juts out more. It juts out more. That's why people want to buy penthouse, and buy higher, and pay a bit more, better, right? Um, so, as one went up from story to story, the chambers become, became wider all around. Uh, why? Why become wider? From what I, I studied, it is because you are nearer heaven. You are approaching God. And as you approach God, things are more majestic. Things are bigger. So, wider chambers. Um, because their supporting ledges in the wall of the temple ascended like steps, therefore the width of the structure increase as one went up from the lower story to the highest by way of the middle one so this is now this is just a model made by people who studied this and then they try and create a, a model and uh, the closest they can get is uh, like a spiral staircase uh, because from what what we read here going from one elevation to another uh, supporting ledges in the ascended like steps. So the only way is steps. Okay. But don't worry. Don't worry. In the millennium, we will get the answer. You will not be staying there, but you can visit. I'm sure. Because you will be with Christ, ruling and reigning for a thousand years. Then you then you tell me whether I taught you the right thing or wrong. <laughs> I also saw, verse 8, I also saw an elevation all around the temple. It was the foundation of the side chambers. Ah, what is this? This one. Okay. So an elevation, the foundation. So this is the ground level. This is the elevation. Then this is the, the temple. So this is one rod, no? it's six cubics. Eh? Means it is getting higher. Earlier we saw, you know, when we read one cubic, it entered. Then there's a pavement, there's a height. Then as you go further, it's even higher. Going up. So it's not just walking. I also saw an elevation all around the temple, which is this, all around the temple. Um, it was a foundation of the side chambers, a full rod, which is six cubics, that is six cubics high. The thickness of the outer wall of the side chambers were five cubics. This one is five cubics. And also the remaining terrace of the play by the place of the side chambers of the temple. And between it and the wall chambers was a width of 25 cubics all around the temple 
on every side. Possibly referring to all this, the thickness. So there's a separation from the chambers and the temple. And verse 11, the doors of the side chambers open on the terrace, one door toward the north, another toward the south. So, this is the east, right? East is there, your door. Where's the east? Yeah. So, this is pointing to the east. So, this one door open towards the north and open towards the south here. Block. And the width of the terrace was five cubics all around. We saw. The building that faced the separating courtyard at its western. So this is a separating courtyard. This is the western. There is east, this is the west. So it's separating courtyard. So this separated the west building which is for storage and the temple. So the building that faced the separating courtyard at its western end was 70 cubics wide. The wall of the building was 5 cubics thick all around and its length 90 cubics. It's okay, don't lose sleep over this, okay? If you can figure out, good. If you can't figure out, just uh, enjoy the drawing. <laughs> but the, the, the diagram is there, it's just the measurements. So he measured the temple 100 cubics long. So this, now he measured this. The temple is 100 cubics long. This is verse 13. And the separating courtyard with the building and its walls was 100 cubics long. So, from the separating courtyard and that building to the end is 100 cubics. That's verse 13. Verse 14, also the width of the eastern face of the temple, including the separating courtyard was 100 cubits. So, facing the east, the eastern, so here, until there. So, including the separating courtyards, 100 cubits. Verse 15. He measured the length of the building behind it, facing the separating courtyard, with its galleries on the one side and on the other side, 100 cubics, as well as the inner temple and the porches of the court. So, you measure inside here also. So, in other words, everything 100 cubics. Ah. There are door posts and the bevel window frames, which we saw just now. Let me show you again. Ah, bevel windows. And the galleries all around, there are three stories opposite the threshold were paneled with wood from the ground to the windows. The windows were covered from the space above the door even to the inner room as well as outside and on every wall all around, inside and outside by measure. Yeah. You want me to finish up uh, a bit more? You can, uh. Okay, now verse 18. And it was made with cherubim and palm trees. So they always had these uh, uh, pictures. Okay. Cherubim and palm trees, which we saw even inside. Even inside here, they drew on the cow. Cherubim and then palm tree. A palm tree between the uh, cherub and cherub. Palm tree between cherub and cherub. 
like this, a palm tree between cherub and cherub. Yeah. So they alternate, lah. that's what it is. Mm. Each cherub had two faces, so that the face of a man was toward a palm tree on one side and the face of a young lion toward the other. So can you look at the diagram? Can you tell got man's side and lion's side? Can you see? You switch off the light, you should be able to see. Can you see? Yeah. So man's face, lion's face. But when we started Ezekiel, there were four faces. But now, on one dimension, we see two, and one is man, and one is lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. So when you go and watch, turn off all the lights. <laughs> okay. So, um, each cherub had two faces, so that the face of a man was toward a palm tree, on one side, and the face of a young lion toward a palm tree on the other side which it is. And it was made throughout the temple all around. So throughout the temple, all around they had this. Uh, but, okay, but this is another diagram. This is not fun. Okay, on this. Okay, from the floor to the space above the door and on the wall of the sanctuary, cherubim and palm trees were cut. So knowing that inside, outside, they all have this uh, cherubim and palm trees. The doorposts of the temple were, were square, as was the front of the sanctuary. The appearance, the appearance was similar. The wall, altar was of wood. Here, the altar was of wood, three cubics high, and its length two cubics. So you can see, three cubics and two cubics high. Its corner, its length, and its sides were of wood. And he said to me. This is the table that is before the Lord. That's all. This is the table that is before the Lord. Nothing else. No, no other show, bread, a, a candlestick, altar. Mm. This is the table that is before the Lord. Now, the last part, verse 23. Now, we will be looking at this. So this is the altar and that is the door. And that is the door. Okay. You, just now when you saw the video, do you see how the door was open? You know, like like our those uh, plastic door, right? Folding doors. Okay, we read, huh? The temple and the sanctuary had two doors. Okay, so or two doors, the temple and the sanctuary. The doors had two panels apiece. So, so there are two doors. Door to the sanctuary, door to the temple. And each door, the doors had two panels. So each door got two panels. This is one door, two panels. One door, two panels. You follow? They are folding. Right? So, one door got two panels. Folding. So the doors had two panels apiece. Two folding panels. Two panels for one door and two panels for the other door. He explained it so detail. Come misa. Okay. Before we go on to verse 25. Before we go on to verse 25. Why? Why two panels? Why not just one door? All the other doors just like that. Just open, close. But this one is like that. Like that. Fold. This one door. But if one door, two panel, that means in the center of folding. <coughs> Jesus is the door. We know that, right? Jesus is the door. And then in the in the in the Solomon's temple, in the tabernacle, there's an outer door when you enter into the outer court. And then there's a, another door that enters into the inner court for the holy, for the priest. And Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. God is first, Jesus, then the third person is the Holy Spirit. So two panels represent 
Jesus and Jesus is the door. He said, I am the door. No one goes through me. Yeah, I mean, no one goes to the Father except through Him. So this is a picture of the second person of the Trinity. Jesus is the door. He is the way to the Father. Okay, because once you go through, once you go through the door from outside, inside, into here, this is the table before the Lord. It's formerly you have the ark, and so now no more ark. He's here. So the doors had two panels and uh, and one and two panels for one door and two panels for the other door. Verse twenty-five. Cherubim and palm trees were carved on the doors of the temple, just as they are carved on the walls. A wooden canopy was on the front of the vestibule outside, and there were bevel windows, frames, uh, and palm trees on one side and on the other side, and on the sides of the vestibule. Also on the side chambers of the temple and on the canopy. These are just description of, of uh, all these designs and, and, and so on that they have done along the wall. So that is chapter 41. And as we have studied these two chapters, you know, can't be symbolic. For God to, to put all these details in, it is not just a picture or symbol. It is the blueprint of the temple that is to be built during the millennium. So Father, we thank you for all these details that you have recorded for us. Indeed, you have taught us that there is no shortcut. And all that we see and all that we hear, even as we fix our mind and our heart unto you, Lord, we are to declare to the people. Lord, I pray that we will do it according to your word. We do everything according to your instruction. And that we will not cut corners. Lord, we are indeed we are indeed blessed and privileged that our lives are measured and planned out by you. Nothing escapes your in your 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 your, your view, your, nothing escapes your attention of us. So we commit ourselves to you and we pray, dear Lord, continue to lead us as we follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.